Hello, this is Patrick at 1CNC West, and what we're going to do in this training video is take a look at how we can machine a chamfer, and also take a look at how we can machine a fillet on our part. Now typically you'd have the profile or the pocket already machined, but in this example we're going to jump right into the chamfer operation. So to do that we're going to head over to the main toolbar located on the left hand side of the screen. Under the cam category we're going to left click on stock tool pass, and we're going to grab the chamfer operation. Just left hand mouse click on that. Now, 1CNC wants us to determine what it is we want to chamfer. So this works just like the profiling operation. We're going to left hand mouse click. Once we do that, we get the four arrows. Now remember, the arrows determine the side and the direction that we want to cut. I want a climb cut on the outside, so I'm going to grab that arrow. Now our cursor changes to the word end. Now this is where we tell 1CNC where we want to terminate the chamfer machining. So if I wanted it to stop here, I could left click. If I wanted it to stop here, I could left click. If I want it to go all the way around, I can left click right here. Or I can simply hit the F3 key on the keyboard, function key 3, to select the rest of the geometry. Now once we're done selecting geometry, just right hand mouse click, and we get our first dialog box here. Here's our select a tool. Remember, you can easily define a tool on your own by putting in the data here or you can left click on the graphic or left click down here where it says tool changer to grab a tool from the tool library. So if I grab the library tab and come down here to, to chamfer, you can see here some different chamfer tools. I'll grab that one and click OK and then one CNC populates the values here. I'll say that's turret position number one. I'm going to take the spindle speed make that 2400. We'll leave the feed rates alone. Here's our clearance plane. I'm going to have that at a half inch. You can see all this is very similar to the other machining operations we've looked at. Now this is very important though. You have two options here for geometry position. You have one and two. If we're selecting wireframe geometry, you want to use this option number one. All right. If we had a solid model, we would want to use option number two because we'd be selecting this bottom edge of the solid model. But because we're using wireframe geometry, just make sure this is set to 1. The length, that's the hypotenuse distance of the chamfer. Width is the width, and that's what I'm focused on here, and I've got that set at 50 thousandths. All right, so now we have our entry and exit for finishing. This is how we approach and exit the chamfer operation. And there's different styles. This is exactly like profiling. You have different ways to approach and exit. I'm going to say all this looks good, so we'll click finish on that. And there's our chamfer operation. Now, why don't we simulate this? I'm going to right click on the toolpath group. I'm going to grab simulate. I'm going to use pick a boundary to determine the stock. The top of the stock is going to be at Z0. The bottom of the stock is going to be at minus 1. That looks good, so I'll click OK. And now 1CNC wants me to digitize the shape that I'm going to use for the stock. So I'm just going to left click that shape and then right hand mouse click. All right, I'll rotate that around a little bit. So there you go. There's our 50 thousandths chamfer being machined on the part. Very, very simple. All right. Now let's take a look at putting a fillet on here. Fillet works exactly the same way. I'm going to come over here and we're going to go to our stock tool pass. This time instead of selecting chamfer, we're going to go with corner rounding. And again, this works exactly the same way. You left click where you want to start, you get your four arrows. The arrows determine the side and direction you want to cut. I'm going to left click that arrow because I want to climb cut the outside. I want to go all the way around, so I'm going to hit the F3 key, function key 3. I'm done selecting, so I'm going to right hand mouse click. And then here's our dialog box for selecting our corner rounding tool. Again, you can manually define a tool or pick a tool from the library. by. If you want to pick a tool from the library, just left click on the graphic or where it says tool changer. I'm happy with all the information there, so I'll click next. I'm happy with the clearance values. I'm going to leave those alone. And you can see this is identical to chamfer. For geometry position, you have 1 and 2. So for wireframe geometry, I want to make sure that the geometry position is set to 1. Notice too that you can leave an offset in X and Z. I'm going to leave that alone for now. I'm going to say that's fine. And then you also have the added ability within the corner rounding operation to output cutter comp G41 and G42 if you'd like. I'm going to leave it set to automatic though, which is no cutter comp. We'll click next on that. Here's our lead in and lead out. This works just like profiling also. I'm going to say all oh, this looks good though. I might change that to zero. We'll click finish. And there's our, our corner rounding operation. Let's simulate that. So I'm going to right click on the operation, just on the corner rounding operation. We're going to go with simulate. I'll leave those values alone. Again, we'll left click that shape for the boundary. And then here is our corner rounding operation. So very, very simple, just like the chamfering. And you can see it's applying the corner round on there. All right, great. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.